Welcome to the second uh, session of the module 5. So in the previous class we have discussed what are uh, the machine tools and what are the different types of machine tools which are there and we are, even we have also taken a small introduction to the lathes. Before I just proceed with the specification of the lathe, basically this lathe, a machine tool which rotate, uh, the tool that rotates a workpiece about an axis of rotation to perform various operations such as cutting, sanding, knurling, drilling, deformation and then facing and turning operations with the tools that are applied to the workpiece to create an object with symmetry about its own axis. It is only because they will have only two degrees of freedom. That means the material removal that takes place only in the with respect to the two axis. One is the x axis and the other one is x axis and the other one will be a z axis. When it comes to the drilling uh, and even uh, for the milling processes, what happens? It will have a three degrees of freedom. That means the tool will be able to move in three axes, X, Y and even in the Z axis. They are the uh, three uh, degrees of freedom for that uh, case of drilling and milling operations. Whereas in the lathe operations, you will only have two degrees of freedom one is in x direction the other one will be in the z directions lathe machine is one of the oldest machine tools in the production machines and this is also known as mother of all machines because of its flexibility now actually uh, uh, the use of these lathe machines have also given out an advanced uh, uh, way of uh, producing it that is with the computer numerical control also so there is an in though there are an advanced lathe machines have also produced the conventional lathe machines still they are in use in most of uh, automobile and workshops okay now when it comes to a lathe machine it can be defined as the tool that removes an undesired material from a rotating uh, a bar material a rotating workpiece in which a form of chips with the help of tool that is being traversed across the work and can be feed deep into the work that is it is the most versatile and widely used machines also because of that uh, applications now there is a one small uh, topic uh, in your uh, syllabus that will deal about the specification of the lathe that means every machine that is being, whether it will be a machine tool or any irrespective of the machines, every machine will have their own specifications. Specifications are nothing but uh, an identifying features for a lathe. Okay. Now, even if you go for and purchase for a air conditioning system or any fan, you will say the specifications, 1 ton of refrigeration, 1.5 ton of refrigeration. It should be so and so uh, purifying specification right but even when you go on purchase the refrigeration then also you will define the specifications so likewise how we define the lathe machines it depends upon the specification of the lathe as the name itself uh, uh, the, the identifications in this figure as you can make it out the overall length of the bed is been given in headstock to the tailstock this is a headstock as I told you yesterday where we are going to fix the tool. A tile stock is the one which makes uh, the supporting uh, role for the work pieces. And the distance, the extreme distance between the headstock and the tile stock is given by the overall length of the bed. That is the one thing. And the second one is, as you can see this, the distance between the headstock, the center between the headstock and to the tail stock this is called as a center between uh, distance between the centers this is the distance between the centers and then the height this is called as a swing of workpiece over the lathe bed that means in the three jaw or the four jaw charts whatever the workpiece that we are fixing the diameter has to be fixed when we are rotating it it should not touch the bottom plate isn't it so that is the reason why we fix this as a swing of the workpiece over the bed this is the one and there is also an extreme between the gap in the bed there is a 
small depth will be there in order to remove the chips because there will be continuous forming of removal of the material will be taking place during that what happens the chips will be continuously flowing and the chips which are coming out of the workpiece should fall down if it doesn't remove sufficiently it should not whatever the chips that have been removed should not come in contact with that it is only because the temperature because there will be a physical friction metal to metal friction will generate a very high temperature so the chip that is been removed will be of very high temperature that is first point and the second point is we will apply the coolant when we apply the coolant the coolant should also flow right so for that purpose we have given a gap in the bed no gap in the bed is not a specification my difference but the distance swing of the workpiece over a gap in the bed is also one of the specification is it clear and then the lathe bed this is called as a lathe bed and we also one of the specifications which we, it is not shown over here it is the height of the lathe machines if you have just listed out here a lathe is generally specified by swing the largest work diameter that can be swung for the lathe bed so that is the largest diameter that it can hold is a one of the major uh, specification of that and then the distance between headstock and tailstock that is what the distance between headstock and the tailstock and the length of the bed in the meters the length of the bed in terms of the meters will also matter the pitch of the lead screw i just will show you in the next stage what do you mean by a lead screw lead screw means it is something like a, a threaded uh, shaft wherein which we can move this carriage very easily we can move the tool holder very easily that is what we call it as the pitch of the lead screw horse power of the machine the capacity or the energy that it requires to do the work is nothing but a horse power of the machine and then speed range the speed limits or a range what maximum speed that it can generate is nothing but the speed range and the number of speeds in the uh, hs spindle that is high speed spindle number of speeds i just as i just told you basically it will have a 220 uh, from beginning starting from 220 to 154 then 220 and 380 and then 480 so this is how up to 800 uh, uh, rpm that we can set it and then the weight of the machine in terms of tons so these are all the uh, general specifications of the lathe which defines the ability or the capacity of a particular uh, lathe so based on these specifications the industries will uh, purchase the lathe for their requirement now different parts of the lathe i just i'll, I'll go through it uh, quickly and i'll show you in the diagram of the headstock bed tailstock carriage saddle cross slide compound rest tool post apron lead screw feed rod chuck main spindle and then a leg these are all the different uh, parts of the lathe actually let me go through one by one headstock is the place where we where we are going to fix the tool okay headstock is the one where we are going to fix the tool here it is so this is the place this is called as a headstock where we are going to fix the uh, tool and even the speed for the rotation will be given in the headstock because the workpiece has to rotate right when it has to rotate we have to supply the energy we have to supply the power for that so when we have to supply the power into this uh, uh, spindle so spindle is the one which is nothing but a rotating part headstock is something a supporting for the spindle it is something like an envelope a spindle at the center of the spindle there will be uh, a chucks will be there it is nothing but a three-jaw chuck as I just told you yesterday itself in the uh, previous class. There will be three-jaw chuck and there will be a four-jaw chuck. It is only to make 
a, a particular workpiece to hold like this. If there are four jaws, then we call it as a four jaw. If it is only three, then we call it as a three jaw chuck. So these chucks will be fixed to the spindle. As spindle rotates, the chucks will also rotate. As the chucks rotate, the workpiece which has been fixed into this chuck will also rotate faster. Whatever the speed that we are giving, that is not for the workpiece actually. We are giving it to the spindle. Whenever we switch off the power and uh, we pro fix the speed, the speed with which it is rotating, that will be a spindle. Since the workpiece will be fixed for this spindle, that will also rotate with the uh, prescribed speed. Is yes, that clear? Now, the place where we are going to fix the chuck, that is a spindle, is called as a live center. It's a live center, it is only because, it is only because we are just having, we are just having the active part of the workpiece is being rotated in this section. So, it is called as the live center. When it goes to the other part, you just see the opposite side, there is a tile stock. Now, please be careful here, my dear friends. Tile stock is an opposite supporting the section for this tile stock where this tile stock will be fixed. In this tile stock also, we have got a sort of spindle which is not rotatable, but it will give a certainly a support. Now, for example, my dear friends, if I take this and if I rotate this part, it will rotate effectively. The same way, if I take this a long length and if it rotates, what happens? It wobbles like this. It just wobbles like this. It doesn't rotate like this. So, what we will give it is, we will give a support like this. We will support it like this. And then we will rotate it. So, this support is been given by a dead center. That is what will be fixed in the tile star. And it's see, here, this tail stock can be moved. This tail stock can be moved a hand wheel over here. Uh, no, actually this can be physically moved on this rack where it has been mentioned at the bottommost portion of the tail stock which is given by rack. This is free to move towards the live center and it can go away from the live center whereas the headstock is fixed. Headstock is fixed and it is not free to move. It is fixed. Is it clear? Whereas in the tail stock what happens? Tail stock can be moved. Now here Please be careful. In the dead center, in the dead center, this dead center or a spindle like things can be removed by operating a hand wheel at the back side of this tail stock. Is that clear? This can be moved towards the front and it even it can be taken towards the back side by operating this hand wheel. And even above the tail stock, there is a one knob. By pushing this, we can completely remove this dead center. If I want to drill a hole, if I want to drill a hole, I can remove this dead center and I can place a, a drilling tool or a drilling bit so that it operates and it uh, makes a hole in the workpiece. Is it clear? So that is the use of this uh, tail stock. Major purpose of this tail stock is to support the, uh, the workpiece, rotating workpiece and this is also used to make, to hold the drilling, only drilling tools. Okay, now this is a head tail stock and this is a head stock. Now, even now let us come back uh, to this head stock. As I have already told you, we can vary the spindle speed. In order to vary the spindle speed, we have got a, a speed control uh, levers in the head stock by which we can control the speed. We can make the speed increasing and we can make the speed to rotating also. And the certain equations when the work, work piece is being uh, subjected to the process, at the end we can also stop it. We can make it on and we can also make it off using this speed control levers. There is a small lever will be there. You can set the speed and you can make it on and off also. Is it clear? Now this tool post, please, this is a 2D diagram. It is something like this tool post is what which is in place like this. It can be moved, it can be slided. Okay. Now I will come from the bottom. Now here the feed gearbox will be there just below the headstock where 
by this what we can do it is we can move this carriage we can move this carriage carriage is the one which holds uh, the cross plate compound rest on the tool post okay in this carriage the way it moves can also be controlled by uh, a wheel which is been provided a circle with a plus mark it is something like a wheel is even like a steering a car steering or a vehicle steering is there that is how it will be there you can keep rotating if you are rotating in a counter clockwise direction it will move towards the light center if you are rotating in a clockwise direction so once again it will move towards the dead center or it is towards the time stock and this can be made it as an automatic also this can be made it as an automatic also but i am just uh, giving a, uh, one exposure for a conventional lens this can be moved whereas here a dark line what you can see it here it is a, a lead screw lead screw is nothing but it is a complete uh, one bar element, bar like structure with which it will be threaded so that what happens the carriage will move smoothly is it clear then there will be a feed rod the rod which supports it and the apron plus the saddle it is the only the enclosure or the covering that is been given okay the feed gear box uh, whenever uh, it is only because even in your vehicle when you want to go for a first gear second gear third gear so whenever we want to have the changes in the speed what we will do it is we will have a different uh, gears these different gears will gives us a different uh, speeds whenever it go coincides with that it makes uh, the variation in the speed whenever we disengage the spindle will stop that gear box mechanism or the gear mechanism will be given it in the gear uh, feed gear box then there will be a come to the carriage a prone uh, and saddle it is nothing but an enclosure or a closed uh, envelope it is been given for this on the uh, cross side and the compound rest now a guide base will also be there at the top so that what happens it is something like a moving it will be greased or it will be lubricated thoroughly so this will move a very smooth on this guide base which guides the movement of this uh, carriage this carriage above the carriage we have a cross slide this cross slide this is a carriage oh my dear friend this is a carriage above the carriage we have got a cross slide this cross slide can be tilted 360 degrees okay and this can move front and back is it clear now this is please be careful this cross slide can be moved front and back it can be moved left and right and it can be rotated also above this cross slide we have a compound rest the compound rest can also have a minor movement an angular movement or angular tilting is been possible above this compound rest we will have a small a region like this a small region like this where we are going to fix the tool like this this is called as a tool post tool post is been located or it has been situated above the compound rest where this compound rest supports the tool post where the particular tool will be fixed towards the direction of life center or it will be provided exactly perpendicular in direction is it clear a saddle as you can see it here compound rest compound rest is been given with the saddle so that by rotating it you can move it forward in incremental wise the tool should go and touch the workpiece and incrementally it should touch it and it will remove it if you want it we will rotate it in the opposite direction so that the tool will come back tool post or uh, it will have a nut and bolt system where we are going to fix the tool and we will tighten it and it should be tightened to the maximum uh, condition so that it should not get rid of that if it is not been fixed it will leads to lot of vibrations and the material removal will be uh, unethical so that means i mean to say that the material removed from the workpiece will be uh, waste that means it will not remove the materials properly the tool post uh, uh height will be adjusted in such a way that it should this can be moved up and down also it is only because 
it is only mukha because this craft plate or this compound rest can be moved up and down also because it has to move from top to bottom in order to reduce the materials in certain occasions it is a up and down cross and rotation and in and out this is how the flexibility the movement of the tool flexibility will be given by the saddle and the compound rest the tool post use is only to fix the tool but the movement for this tool post is in extensively given by the compound rest and the cross leg is it clear so the guide weights will always makes a major movement whereas the saddle makes a minor movement like in millimeters in a fraction of millimeters or millimeters whereas in a guide weights we can majorly move in terms of centimeters and millimeters also okay and even in this carriage we will also have on and off buttons or is it okay now let us come back at the bottom we have got a bed a bed is something which supports which makes the uh, chips or the material removed will falls down onto this bed and even the coolant that is coming because, <coughs> because of the two uh, metal contact so that what happens tremendous amount of uh, heat will be generated in order to remove that heat what happens we will supply the coolant that coolant after taking the heat that will fall down and that will be taken out and cleaned later on on the bed bed is something like a tray upon so it is just a tray whatever the waste it is coming whether it may be coolant or it may be uh, the scrap material or it may be the chips which are coming out will be fall onto this and that will be cooled later on okay now here the longitudinal feed hand wheel so that is the traverse feed hand wheel and then coolant uh, tray will be there and this is called as a cabinet leg on the two sides and these cabinet legs takes a lot of uh, vibrations so in most of the occasions what happens these cabinet legs are not fixed on normal floors it will be given a further uh, uh, support with uh, a, a good uh, elevations it is not fixed on the ground side it will be given with the concrete bed this concrete bed will take uh, give a good support to this cabinet legs and makes it to uh, survive with so much of vibrations so these are all the different parts of a lathe a conventional lathe will have all these things majorly head stock tail stock live center dead center tool post compound rest cross slide carriage rack and the guide ways leads through feed rod feed gear box bed cabinet leg and a prawn or saddle that's it so these are all the different parts of a lathe he will not ask you to explain but uh, he might ask you to draw a sketch of this lathe and you have to identify certain points what are the different operations that can be performed on the lathe are almost all the basic uh, machining operations can be performed on the lathe they are like a turning turning is the operation where we are reducing the diameter of the work piece thread cutting i'm sorry taper turning when in which we will give a conical shape for the uh, work piece then we will also have a thread cutting where we will give a threads we will make uh, threads on to the work pieces and then the boring uh, then we will also give a facing boring is something we, we are nothing but making it a already drilled hole with the higher diameter and then the facing in the facing what happens if i want to cut this material i will go for the facing operations okay then the drilling drilling is nothing but making a hole okay now please look at it here in all the operations in all the operations the tool post will post will hold the tools only in the drilling only in drilling what happens the drilling bit will be fixed in the dead center this dead center will be removed and the uh, drill bit that is the drilling tool will be fixed in the dead center in rest of the cases it will be fixed in the 
tool post. The most commonly used uh, tool for this is a high speed steel, which we call it as a HSS tool. Is okay. Next, we will have a reaming process. It can be done with a knurling process, and then milling can also be done, and then the, the grinding process. Now let us talk about one of the important uh, process that is nothing but a turning process. In the turning process, actually the figure itself shows the turning uh, operations. As you can see this, this is the chuck. Before the chuck, we have a spindle modification. Okay, this is a spindle which has been fixed in the headstock and we have a chuck. The chuck will rotate with a very fast, you know, this is... It can be two jaw or three jaw check where the work piece is being or the material is being fixed. When we give the speed to the uh, spindle, so what happens? It rotates it. When the spindle rotates, even the chuck will also rotate and the work piece will be folded in a chuck. So that what happens? Even the material will be rotated with a very high speed. So that what happens? The tool which is being fixed in the tool post, please be careful here. Can you see this dotted lines? Can you see this dotted lines? That means that the tool was earlierly was here because the workpiece is fixed and it is only rotating. We are going to make the tool to move towards the left direction. Towards the left direction, since it is a symmetric, since it is a symmetric, what happens? The tool will make the contact with the material and there is a point contact, a sharp edge is there in the tool. You can make it out. A sharp edge in the tool keeps removing the material. Keeps continuously removing of the material so that what is reducing? Are they reducing the diameter or uh, they are reducing the length? It is very clear that they are reducing the diameter. Now you can see this. How much ever the diameter is removed? Say for example, I have a bar of 10 mm. I want to make it into a what? I want to reduce it to 8 mm. That means 8 mm. No, here the small increment 2 mm has to be removed. Correct? 2 mm diameter has to be removed. So that what happens? The tool will move 2 mm towards the material. That is what we call it as a cutting depth. Whatever the 2 mm that we are removing it whatever the uh, uh, diameter that we are removing it that is nothing but the cutting depth if you want to remove 2 mm we will give it as a 2 mm and the cutting depth is decided as 2 mm so it will go 2 mm depth and it will fix it will go 2 mm depth and then it will be fixed then it will not move towards inside so but it will move towards a uh, horizontally so that what happens the material will be removed completely now you can ask me if you want to remove the complete material then what we will do it is we will reverse the material and we will feed it that's it as uh, simple as that okay now the towards the depth whatever we are giving it towards the depth or a 2 mm that is nothing but depth of cut and the spin the sending uh, speed will be towards the left direction so this is called as a turning operation turning is one of the late operations in which the material will be removed. Uh, the material will be removed from the uh, workpiece in order to reduce its uh, diameter. This is an important point. Where here the principle of metal cutting operations using a single point uh, cutting tool on the lathe. So as I have already told you, it is a single point cutting tool which is happening over here. The workpiece is then supported in between the two centers which permit the rotation of the workpiece. A single point cutting tool is been fed perpendicular to the axis. That is mean it is been perpendicular to the axis of the workpiece. Axis of the workpiece is been given with the dotted lines and the depth of cut is perpendicular to that. That is what we mean to say. Perpendicular to the axis of the workpiece to known uh, predetermined depth of cut and is then moved parallel to the axis. It is perpendicular movement then parallel movement. Perpendicular movement for the depth of cut. Parallel movement for the removal of metal. Which comes out as shown in figure. This method of machining operations in which the workpiece is been reduced to the cylindrical section 
of the required diameter is called as a turning diameter. Is that clear? That is the use of this turning. Now, the similarly, this is the facing operation. Well, in which what we are doing it is instead of giving the tool moment towards the left, if I keep giving it in the straight directions, so what happens? Its length will be deducted, its length will be reduced. That is nothing but a facing. Facing is defined as an operation performed on the lathe to generate either flat surface or shoulders at the end of the workpiece. In facing operations, the direction of the feed given in given is perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. The workpiece is being held in the chuck and the facing tool is being fed either from the outer edge of the workpiece progressing towards the center or vice versa. The cutting tool is held to a tool holder which is nothing but a tool post. Now here this is a facing tool or the chips that is being coming out. Now it is just removing so much of material. Is it clear? So that means what is happening is its diameter, I am sorry, its overall length reducing. We have so much of things and I am just removing this. So what is happening? If I remove this, what happened? The length has been reduced. So this is called as a facing operation. That can be done using facing tool. Okay. Thank you.